Nigeria last Thursday signed the Cape Town Convention Practice Direction to enable domestic airline operators access aircraft on dry lease. Chief Judge of the Federal High Court, John So, signed the agreement on behalf of Nigeria under the supervision of Vice President Kashim Shetima. And that was during a stakeholders meeting of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment, Environment Council. Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Airpeace, Dr. Ale Noyema, who witnessed the event alongside other stakeholders in Nigeria's aviation sector, now joins us to have a conversation about the significance of this development, which comes 20 years after the treaty's inception. Good morning, Dr. Yema. And congratulations will be in order, isn't it? <laughs> Good morning. Good to have you join us uh, on the morning show today. Uh, I'm sure that you like our arrangement, you know, <laughs> with my angels. angels. <laughs> left, left, and the right. I'm sure you know the, the Charlie I'm Angels thing. Ignore me for a moment. Fantastic soul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I always see her, and uh, I think she, I, I like the young ones. <laughs> yeah. they come on these days and uh, get their right. acts together. So you're doing very well. Thank you. Thank you so All much, right, Dr. So Yema. It, so. All right, let's kick it off this way. Uh, you were part of the ceremony last Thursday. Tell us about the significance of this um, treaty, uh, which, I mean, it, it has taken about 20 years for it to happen. Access to dry lease is at the heart of it, but I'm sure that you'll get to the difference between dry lease and wet lease because I'm very familiar with the wet lease thing. Tell us about the significance of what happened on Thursday. Thank you very much. You see, um, first of all, I want to use this opportunity to thank Mr. President. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, what he has done is nothing short of revolution. Mm. This is revolution, nothing short of revolution. It has never happened before to us. B by, I mean, midwifing uh, the signing of this um, uh, practice direction, it has kind of helped the airlines, the local airlines, now to up their capacity. People have been talking about lack of capacity in the industry, but I give it to the Nigerian airlines. These airlines have been doing so well, considering the challenges, considering the circumstances they found themselves. I tell you this, you're asking about that significance yes. of this. Now, listen. All the legacy airlines of this world, Delta, British Airways, Emirates, and all of them, they don't really own those planes outrightly. They don't. What they do is that they make orders from the air, uh, aircraft manufacturers and give their specifications. The leasing world, the leasers, the, the finance companies will come in and finance the acquisition for them. Mm. Then lease the aircraft back to them. Mm. That's why you see some airlines having over 800 aircraft. And they lease it back to them for so many years, maybe sometimes some may sign for 15 years. So they'll be paying renters back to the leasing companies. So by so doing, it's very easy to acquire aircraft. However, in Nigeria, just like in other, other things we do in this country, you have to have deep pocket. You must go out there and buy your own aircraft, uh, just like you buy your houses. I tell you this, the money, we used in buying one brand new plane can get me about 50 or 40 aircraft on dry lease. Wow. Yes. So when people criticize Nigeria Airlines, they don't, they should, when you see an airline owner in this country, don't your heart for, for, it, for them. Believe me, they are doing, it's just that the business is addictive. Mm. It doesn't give you anything in return because everything is working against you. But with the signing of this uh, practice direction, it means the leasing world now will start leasing aircraft to Nigeria. The question is, why were they not leasing aircraft to us in the first place? Some time ago in the past, some Nigerian airlines, they said, defaulted in paying rentals. Mm. And when the owners came back to take their aircraft, um, Nigerian airlines rushed to court and uh, got caught in junction and kept the plane here. Some did it, yes, it happened. And because of that, we were unofficially blacklisted. 
that is country risk. It's not as if they don't know the airlines that will do okay, but country risk will come in. And because of that, the leasing world kind of stopped giving us dry lease. <coughs> Excuse me. What you get in this part of the world is uh, wet lease. Yeah. And wet lease is very expensive. No airline in the world will run with wet lease. Wet lease is supposed to be temporary, something you do just to stop the gap. And, uh, but I have to tell you something, Steve. The truth is that the country, Nigeria, is heavily stigmatized. Mm. Heavily stigmatized. All you need to be uh, called all sorts of names is for you to be called a Nigerian. It is not totally true that those Niger well, the Nigerian airlines in the past that went to court actually defaulted. Mm. No. I'll give you an example of Top Brass. Okay. Top Brass airline did lease purchase. Lease purchase means you are leasing, but at the end of the day, you're going to own that aircraft. Mm. That's a different thing from outright dry lease. Oh. It was dry lease, but with the intention of the uh, operator taking the aircraft at the end of the day. So if the renter for dry lease was, say, $1 million a month, Top Brass was paying $1.7 million. Mm. The other 700 was he was paying into the so final acquisition, the acquisition of that aircraft. Now, what happened? Four months to the expiration of the tenure of that particular uh, contract with, uh, with the Lesor, the Lesor came asking for the plane back. He said, why? I've not defaulted. Mm -hmm. He said, no, uh, the contract for which you are using to pay for this um, uh, renter has been terminated. Therefore, we do not trust that you could pay. You see, they use all manner of gimmicks, very dirty, I mean, tricks to come, some of them. So, Tobra said, no, I have my bank guarantee with you. Yeah. You can throw in the bank guarantee if I default. Wait until I default. Mm. They refused. They came here to take the aircraft, so he went to court. In that kind of situation, for goodness sake, it was not the fault of that man. It was the fault of the, of the laser. Oh, laser. But they now put it there against us. Coming to APIS, recently, because we had about 17 or so aircraft abroad undergoing maintenance, mm -hmm. we got one aircraft from CFAX Airline in Tunisia on wet lease. Wet lease was costing us about $2 million every month. That's over three point something billion. You don't make anything out of it, but you use it to keep your operation going. Mm -hmm. Now, these guys came into the country. The agreement says, if for any reason you're going to take back this aircraft, you have to bring a replacement aircraft. We had already paid. They just wrote us and said, oh, we need to take this aircraft to Tunisia to do some maintenance for, for only three days. I was in Abuja. And in the night, I was just going through my mails, and I saw that Tony Olajide, the chief operating officer of uh, APIS, yes. Tony Olajide, she, she just grounded the aircraft in Nigeria, so you're going nowhere, and wrote to Nama that this aircraft shouldn't take, take off from this country. When I saw it, I was alarmed. I called Tony that night. I woke her up. I said, Tony, what, what do you think you're doing? The leasing world in this, see, you're putting up APs for problems. Mm. If you ground this aircraft here, the entire world will hear that another Nigerian airline sees their plane belonging to uh, a foreign lessor. And at the same time, they'll say APs is unsafe, mm. that he want, they wanted to go and do maintenance for three days. APs said they should keep the plane flying. Mm. Mm. That's what you hear, yeah. lies. I told Tony, I said, Tony was even almost crying. He said, sir, I don't, I don't trust these people. I don't trust them. But sir, if you say I will release, I say release it. So I overrode her. Mm. The next morning, the aircraft was released and the people went. They never came back. Two million dollars gone. Wow. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority wrote the Tunisian government. They protected their own. Uh, the NCAA was uh, DG uh, Captain uh, Musanuhu. He, he was he was enraged. He wrote 
He, nothing they didn't do. How recent was this? Ah, that was some, I think nine, eight months ago or about or nine months ago. So they took their aircraft, took her $2 million. Wow. We, we went to court. Even we, we went to Tunisia. I even sent to to Tunisia. I was even scared for her life. She went to Tunisia. And they said, oh, they will get him, they will get him. And that was the end of the talk till date. So I decided, I knew that we stood the chance of losing our money. Mm. But in order, for the sake of this country, mm. I allowed their aircraft to go. For the sake of we, your, the reputation? For the reputation, not just LPS alone. The, the entire, because whatever, if I had seized it, it will affect every other airline. Yeah. Right. It will affect the country's rating. It will continue affecting the country. So for this love of country and sake of country, allow them. I knew that money would not come. But I just said, OK. Because if I didn't do that, yeah. today, and let me tell you, even the leasing world, they know we did that. Right. Right. Even Boeing told me that if we had done anything other than that, mm. the world would crash on us. So as Nigerians, we are stigmatized. But we have to fight that stigma. We cannot mm. continue to wallow in stigma, Absolutely. unnecessary stigma. Absolutely. So this particular thing is going to now to help, to because the, what is the practice direction? It's all about within five days. If an operator defaults, and the owner comes calling for his aircraft, yes, it must be released within five days. However, you cannot go to court as an operator without putting the other person on notice. Mm. Because what was happening then was Before. expert yeah. orders. In just orders. Yeah. Come and tell us why this person should not take. Yeah. So it has made it easier now for the lizards to take their aircraft and it gives them comfort. Mm. All right. Well, I mean, congratulations are in order, despite all the uh, dirty aero politics. And we must congratulate airline operators, not just airpiece, because it's an amazing feat for you all. I mean, besides this amazing feat, what does this signify to, uh, you know, passengers? I mean, would it help reduce our airfares? I mean, what does it really um, <laughs> signify for the flying public? Of course, like I said, that uh, what has happened is a revolution. Yes. And uh, this country, I said some time ago, and I told Mr. President when he invited me for IFTA, uh, I, I told him, I said, the ease of doing business in the aviation sector has come back thanks to the kind of appointments you made. First of Kiamo is nothing short but awesome. Um, Kiamo is causing a revolution that uh, I told him, I told Mr. President there that when people were criticizing Kiamo for going to, Boeing, uh, going to Airbus, mm -hmm. on the sideline, whatever they were doing there was just on the... Now, the main thing that took him to Airbus was this kind of thing. Took him to Boeing three weeks ago. Epis was there with him in America, was to broker all this. I told Mr. President that at the end of the day, you will celebrate making this guy your aviation minister. Professor Skiamo has been in the trenches out there trying to get this thing sorted, midwifed it, and the vice president was there to make sure it happened. You know, he's the chairman of Payback. Before it happened, we went into a closed door meeting and everything. The chief judge, there was a mistake. We didn't want any excuse. Yeah. The vice president never wanted any excuse. He never wanted a situation whereby uh, the leasing world would say, oh, this language is not in tandem with what we expected. Yeah. So he called off the meeting and took about three of us or five of us into the room, myself, Dr. Duwale, the lady in charge, the executive secretary of Quebec. We all went in there with the finance minister, uh, Mr. Waledu. All of us were there. Then with the Minister of uh, Aviation. We went in there to, and of course, the Nikon um, commissioner. All of us were there brainstorming on how best to come up with something better. And at the end of the day, they, he had to excuse the chief judge to go back to his chambers. He left the presidential villa and came back with something fantastic the way the leasing world wanted it. Yeah. We gave it to them. Mm -hmm. 
So Nigeria has given them comfort. So I have to, again, say kudos to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who mandated Kerama to do this. He has caused nothing short of revolution. Yes. We are very grateful to Kerama. Following up on, on, on that, because uh, the minister, Festus Kiyamo, earlier uh, was stressing the need for air peace uh, to be able to get access to Heathrow Airport. And, you know, he did threaten the, the other international airlines to restrict their own access from yeah. Muratela Mohammed. But I want to find out how, how is that journey going to get your, the coveted uh, Heathrow slot? And also, how has the Lagos-London route, how's it been performing? Well, you know that this is the sixth month of, of operation. Yes, yeah. it? it is the sixth month. So congratulations. Uh, is it, is it over? I think it's over six months. Is it? We started I think March, March 31st. March 31st, yes. Uh, April, May, June, yeah. July, August, September. Six months. Six months. Right? Right. <laughs> and don't forget my question about um, reduction of airfare. Um, After uh, I, uh, I really want <laughs> Okay, let, let me take the airfare. Uh, you see, um, we're talking about capacity here. Mm. If I spent eighty million dollars buying one of my brand new planes. I ordered thirteen of the E two E two one nine five. Five have already come in. Yeah. The amount of money expended on that five would give me about two hundred aircraft. Wow! 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 So I don't need to. I amass so much money now to start getting uh, acquiring planes. You understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if every Niger the list of Nigerian airlines, those with five planes or three planes, those there are three pla planes. The cost of acquiring those three aircraft, whether used aircraft or brand new, even used one, mm -hmm. could afford them twenty or thirty aircraft. If they bring out the capital outlay for yes. those three alone, and not talk of airpiece, maybe we own about four hundred planes now wow. out of thirty-five. With this own. practice direction. Yes. So it will help the entire Nigerian airline industry. We acquire this with ease. Now, that because you've not expended a lot of money, you're not paying, um, what do you call it, interest at 35% for, for a huge sum of money, yeah. that will affect the bottom line it, positively. And bring the, bring and the bring prices the fair, down. Bring the prices appreciably. Down. Yes, appreciably. But that's not the only thing that will bring prices down. I'll, I'll get to that later. But this will help okay. in bringing prices down. This will, this will increase interconnectivity mm -hmm. because I have a lot of planes. You don't need to come to Abuja or Lagos from Port Harcourt to go to Kano. Mm. When you have so many planes flying, you need to do Port Harcourt Kano direct. You can do Calabar Enugu. You can do Enugu to, to Ilori. You know, but what we do now is that everybody comes to Lagos or Abuja to go to other places. No. You can do Yola to Medugri because you'll be able to acquire the kind of aircraft that will do can such, do such stretch. Yes. So interconnected. And it's going to improve. In fact, the president has caused a revolution in the economy already with this. Fantastic. Once, once we move in, we are going to interconnect this country. We are going to open up this country, wow. and that is opening up the economy. Agri products will find their way to the cities and other places. How about the West Coast? Mm. We are going to dominate the entire West Coast and Central Africa. That's what he has empowered. You see, the resilience of the average Nigerian entrepreneur should not be called into question. What the president has done now is to give us that platform to explode. You see what is going to happen. Right. And of course, let me tell you. Before the signing of this, mm -hmm. the leasing world already have started approaching APIs. Remember, they came to APIs. They knew APIs could handle dry leads. Yeah. They came to us. Even last year, two years ago, they came. They said, but the language of the law in Nigeria has mm -hmm. not permitted them to come. We know APIs could do this, they could do that, because they saw us getting about 10 aircraft on wet leads. Mm -hmm costing up over 20 million every month. Wow. And APIS didn't owe, for 10 months, didn't owe anybody. Not knowing that it was the headless source that gave Smartlings those plans to give us. And they were waiting, watching from behind to know what we would do. So when everything was okay, they now visited us with Boeing. That was how this whole thing started. 
And uh, one thing I like by, about, about this minister, he listens. Okay. When he was appointed, people said, oh, a lawyer, what's the lawyer doing in aviation? You don't need to be an aviator to run a successful minister of aviation. I'm not, I'm a lawyer. A lawyer I'm a lawyer and I can say that APC is succeeding. APC is threatening the world. Yeah. Yet I'm a lawyer. When Kiamo, look at what he's doing. He listens, he studies, he learns. He merely have brought this to his attention. He took it. He is it took because it you're both lawyers so you understand that it's the language that, no, no, that was he, he making has an the open ease mind. of business difficult? That's, 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 that's a, a lawyer speaking as well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's just a lawyer. No, because, no, we, you, you, we're talking about the ease of yes, doing business, business and mm -hmm. you're speaking about a treaty. Like There's laws and there's legislations that can make business either harder mm -hmm. or easier. right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I'm asking, bringing your legal mind into this. So all the ministers into this, because I'm going back to my question, mm -hmm. because you've spoken about Nigeria's reputation internationally yeah. and how that has been detrimental in some ways and you're trying to change that perception of Nigerian businesses and airlines and even Nigerians itself and this is why the Heathrow question came into into the conversation okay. is are we respected internationally are they giving us the the same uh, respect that we give them with this inter reciprocity essentially okay uh, the truth is that uh, this country is not respected <laughs> And it's deliberate. I think they're even afraid of the country. So they try to put you down. They try to do everything to you know, make you not access the kind of things you're supposed to access. About history, you asked of. Yes. Gatwick in itself is not bad. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything bad yeah. in Gatwick. Gatwick is not bad. What the minister was saying, you know, why we want Abuja history? Lagos, Gatwick will remain. Okay. But APC has just been given the rights to do Abuja history. Mm. And we've acquired two more triple sevens two that we come into the country we bought. Mm -hmm. So we have five wide body aircraft. That is huge. They can't continue sitting down the tarmacs of Lagos. Because one triple seven can fly for the next three months. Nothing will happen to it. So you have extra four yeah. lying fallow. The government had just given us Abuja history. We are ready to do the Abuja history because we don't want to put everything in Gatwick. And again, Heathrow, because of more connectivity mm. to the outside yes. world, yeah. Yeah, yes. that was why the minister stood his ground that this must happen. And we are waiting, Britain, they are our friends. Yes. We, we, have a, we are not against the British people. We, we have love, a long history. We have a long history with them. Right. It's, uh, both governments will sort it out. Yeah. Our yeah. prey does not get to the wire where mm. we have to reciprocate yeah. in a certain way like it happened during the Abacha time, yes. mm. which was also good because sometimes you try, if you don't bend, nobody rides you. Absolutely. So I like what Kehamo is doing. He's very upfront because what has been happening over the years is that Nigerian government officials, because of visa, mm. visa to go to this first world, whatever they call them, are ready to throw their own kids and kids under the bus. Mm. They sell their people just because of visa. They want to look good because of visa and they get for themselves and their families. They do all, some of these things. But here we have a minister who is telling them the way it is. Speaking Reciprocity. We want our airline to access your primary airport. Yes. If not so, you go to Lorry and some other places. Exactly. But we pray. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I can actually in come in here, speaking about, just one second, so I can actually ask a question yeah. during this interview. Yeah. Speaking about broader aviation reforms, you've spoken about a minister that listens. Now, this Cape Town Convention in itself marks a very important step, but many stakeholders are still calling for further reforms in the Nigerian aviation sector such as airport, airport infrastructure and even reduced taxes. As someone who can see the whole canvas, what other steps do you believe that the government should prioritize to enhance the business environment for airlines? Yeah, we, we are speaking about ease of doing business here, and I think the government is doing something about it. That's what I was trying to uh, uh, elucidate before now. Uh, there are so many things. I mean, the Cape Town Convention thing alone cannot solve all the problems. And everybody knows that. Uh, the airport infrastructure has to be improved upon. Uh, transit areas in our airports should be, airport terminals should be um, built. A situation whereby, okay, for instance, we do, APIS does about 10 African countries. We fly to about 10 African countries. 
but we've not been able to bring people here like they do in Togo, ordinary Togo, yeah. and uh, assemble people there, then start distributing. That's what this guy is doing. If I bring somebody for, from Douala yes. uh, to Lagos or to Abuja, the person will have to check out first. Mm. You have to pass immigration, pass quarantine, pass uh, COVID people, pass uh, even Boy Scout before <laughs> you now come out. Then start coming back to check in again. Um, when you, they even ask them for visa, but the person is not coming here. Mm. Maybe he's coming from Douala to Dakar. Yeah. But using a Nigerian airline, trying to transit through mm. Nigeria, mm. you have to make it easy for them. Yeah. So a situation whereby you don't have those transit facilities is going to hinder the profitability or the ease of doing business of the airlines. And so, I can attest to that because I just came back from, you know, uh, my trip from the U.S. I actually did fly airpiece and, you know, I connected through Gatwick Airport. But I had to leave the airport mm -hmm. to get my connecting flight. So, I mean, you did say Gatwick is not bad. Are you going to have a system where Lagos, you have that Lagos to Heathrow? Because I'd like to be able to have that seamless connectivity as well. Are you, are no, you now, doing that? In addition we're, to the, in addition to the uh -huh. yeah. No, yeah. in addition to the Abuja Heathrow. I mean, Lagos, I would love to fly uh, directly to... Nothing stops us uh, from doing Lagos Heathrow. Lagos Heathrow. And uh, Lagos um, um, Gatwick. It depends on designations given to you by the government. Yeah. Remember, there are other airlines who may want to do that. And that is very welcome. So we... The problem, that's the only problem with Gatwick, mm -hmm. what you just yeah. said. Yeah, I had to come uh, out. You have to come out. The same thing is happening in Nigerian airports. Mm -hmm. You have to come out. Yes, you yeah. have to come out, mm -hmm. check out, and mm -hmm. uh, now start checking in again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gatwick doesn't have that transit yes. area for that. Even though many Nigerians are actually flying from the U.S. using Gatwick. Gatwick, because they still find it cheaper, even though they have to come out. But Gatwick is a small airport. Mm -hmm. which makes it good for transit yeah. also, because you don't waste time mm -hmm. over there. I mean, the immigration takes mm -hmm. very easy, five minutes you're out of the airport, mm -hmm. unlike Heathrow also. So there are advantages there, yeah. there are disadvantages. Mm -hmm. The only disadvantage in, in Gatwick is that interconnectivity that will take you out of the, mm -hmm. out of the country. You, you were going to say something about six months into the Lagos, London. Yeah, you can see. It How has it been? It has been very good. Nigerians have been very patriotic. Yes. And, uh, because I was discussing with uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Mr. KK outside? No, no, no. Okay. Why did I forget the name so much? My friend. <laughs> Where? He, today? Yes, yeah, the guy that came into. Mr. Fantastic man. I've been reading his this on this day, you know. Fantastic guy. What Nigeria needs is economic nationalism. If we don't do economic nationalism, we are finished as a nation. We we share the same thoughts. And even the vice president Senator Kashim Shetima shares the same thoughts. Economic nationalism. We have to support our own. We, see, no foreign direct whatever can sustain. We'll for us. No, you yeah. have to have your base first. Mm -hmm. So Nigerians have been very awesome. They've been, they've been enjoying EPIs. Those who flew, the higher mighty, not just ordinary people, they've all been enjoying EPIs. I think what we need is that kind of support. Like the, all the airlines, we had a meeting, the emergency meeting in Abuja last week. AON mm. agreed that we are going to be buying only Dangote fuel. Fuel, mm. that's a good In one. order to help the economy that's, of that's, this country. That's fantastic. We're only going to be buying Dangote fuel, so the money will remain in our country. Exactly. And nobody should look at Dangote as, as Dangote. Yeah. If you hit Dangote tomorrow, mm. over maybe 10 million people will be in trouble. Mm. So it's not, it's beyond 
looking at Aliko as Aliko. Mm. He's carrying on his shoulders the nation, mm -hmm. and he should be supported. Mm -hmm. That's By the Naira to grow the Naira. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I think that's that is such an important like yeah, I, I have a very quick question because we're, we, we, we're about we, we're to run out of time. time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I just want to know because I haven't had the chance to fly a PCS. Is there, is there actually swallow and jello fries? Are all the things <laughs> <all the laughs> we see online, are not you? I should have asked you, but we have the main. Of course, there is. There is. But once again, there is. You want something? I did try it. I tried a goosey soup. But before we go, I wanted yes. to just quickly talk about all the accusations on these airlines, flight delays, safety, um, safety all the hike in price, all of that. Very what quickly. are you guys doing about but this? The really hike, quickly. The, the, the hike the, in price. Yeah. After, in fact, we charge the cheapest in this world. What about flight delays? We charge the cheapest those, in this yeah. world. What you're seeing is how many dollars. I mean, everything about aircraft is dollars. Then when you talk about flight delays, it's all about safety. No airline in the world yeah, would want to deliberately keep Passengers waiting because it's costing you money mm. or even cancel flights. Anytime you see cancellation or delays, it has it, it's not administrative. It has to do with safety. Mm. Either the aircraft or the weather mm. or even VIP movement yes. or some other or some other things. Yeah. So but uh, the other day a foreign airline, I won't name it, you won't know it, going to Britain. Delayed Nigerians for three days. Yes, and right. nobody saw we're, video we're, anywhere. We're uh -huh, but what <laughs> you guys are, are you improving on well, that? What are you guys going to see, do really quickly? To? Is I, I can sit down here and say uh, uh, there are times airlines make mistakes. Mm. Also, there are times the staff they drop the ball, mm. and we have to apologize to yeah. our passengers for that. Yeah. Right. But the Nigerian All airlines right. are really trying under. Circumstances that right. other airlines in the world yeah. will not last right. 72 hours. Well, yeah. Dr. Alan Oyama would like to thank you very much for joining us on the morning show. Congratulations to you thank and you. congratulations to airline operators of Nigeria and to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Absolutely. Yes. 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 It's not just the swaddle, <laughs> yes. the pepper soup. I <laughs> the pepper pepper soup. Yes. My favorite, Dr. Alan, <laughs> is the jollof rice. Yeah, <laughs> thank yeah. you very much indeed.